Welcome, everyone, to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. Well, tis the season for <laughs> colds and flu and other upper respiratory infections. And what can you do to prevent getting sick? And what should you do if you do pick up a bug? We need to know. Joining us on the telephone from... Joining us on the phone from Mayo Clinic Health System in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, is allergy and asthma specialist, Dr. Adela Taylor. Welcome to the program, Dr. Taylor. Welcome, and thank you for the invite. Yeah, well, thanks for being with us. So it is the season for colds and flu, and let's start with the cold. Is it is chicken soup, soup still the best way to treat that? <laughs> Believe it or not, it is. So treating the symptoms along with a hopefully homemade bowl of chicken soup really is the most effective way to treat uh, the common cold. So it's a viral illness, so antibiotics do not do any good, correct? Correct. What about over-the-counter remedies? Do you recommend maybe acetaminophen, Tylenol, decongestants, antihistamines? Well, some of those things are helpful. So uh, things like acetaminophen, which is Tylenol, or uh, the group known as NSAIDs, which would be your ibuprofen or aspirin, are helpful in reducing fevers and headaches. Cough suppressants have not been shown to be very effective. Um, but com um, combination products with antihistamines and decongestants together seem to work much better than using either one alone. In uh, fact, antihistamines can make things a little bit worse by drying you out too much. Yeah, mm, you, I just feel like I'm drinking hot water or tea nonstop when I'm taking some of those. What about, um, you know, they, there can be complications even of the uh, common cold. When should you see your doctor and what are some of those complications? Uh, so you should see your doctor if this cold, if your cold has gone on for over 10 days, if you develop a high fever, if you start to have more difficulty breathing, um, or if you... Or if you feel that you may be getting other bacterial infections on top of it, so that could be an ear infection. So, for example, not just ears being plugged up with a cold, but now you have ear pain, or if they burst and they're draining. Um, if you are an asthmatic and you start to have respiratory symptoms, that would be a reason to see your doctor. Or if the cold's gone on for over 10 days and now you're starting to have significant sinus pressure and a cough that is very productive of sputum, that could be the sign of a sinus infection. Now, does it matter if it's green or not? Green or yellow or clear? <laughs> it really doesn't. Okay. <laughs> and I have heard that you should not blow your nose too forcefully because that can give you sinus problems. Is that true? Well, it, it can back up some of the fluid, not so much into the sinuses, but back into the ears a bit. Mm. Um, we recommend irrigating with salt water. So rinsing your nose or flushing your nose with salt water can help move uh, the drainage that you have and um, help relieve some of the pressure you're experiencing. How can you tell after a couple of days of a cold, I'm like, okay, it's a cold, no big deal. And then all of a sudden I go, oh, no, it's the flu. Or what if I'm getting strep throat? How can you tell the difference between a cold and influenza? So influenza has a really abrupt onset. It comes on hard and fast. Sometimes people can all, almost pinpoint it to the hour that they got sick. Um, you develop a fever that is much, you can have a fever with a cold, but usually it's very low grade. This is a much higher fever, usually associated with a pretty significant sore throat and a headache. But really, the abruptness of how quickly you get sick would um, be a telltale sign for influenza. And um, strep throat, again, it's a quick onset. It comes on very, very fast, and usually the fever is much higher, and the sore throat is real significant and typically pretty significant headache with it. And there is a test for strep throat, right? If there's a question about it, uh, don't you, can't you do a quick strep test? Yes. So you can go in and they swab the back of your throat um, and very quickly they're able to tell you whether it's positive for strep. Uh, and if it is, you need antibiotics. And if it isn't, you don't need antibiotics, correct? That's also correct. So if it's strep throat, that means it's a bacterial infection and should be treated with antibiotics. What about, uh, there's a test for the flu also, isn't there? There is. Um, that's also a swab, but it's done through your nose. 
And um, if that is positive, then there are um, medications to treat influenza. And how long does it take to get that test result? Those results come back pretty quickly. Yeah, and if, uh, as you were saying, it comes on really fast, you you know this probably is the flu. You should go in right away. Don't wait. Do not Don't, pass go. <laughs> do not pass go. You should, if you start to have very quick onset of symptoms, it is best to be seen quickly because um, the medications for influenza work best the faster they are started. So it really is important to be seen um, within uh, within 48 hours of when your symptoms start. The sooner the better because the that helps shorten the duration of the infection. Okay, yeah, let's, oh. but not by much. What, 24 or 48 hours? I mean, you know, they're okay, <laughs> but they're not great, right? Well, right. So depending on the drug, anywhere from a day to a couple of days. But anyone who's had the flu will take one day less right. of yeah. their symptoms. Uh, what about the lungs? Let's move into the lungs and uh, talk about bronchitis or asthma. Does Do people have different have different types of asthma when it comes to um, the cold season? Um, so the, as asthmatics, some of them divide up into coughers where their major symptom is a cough and others are more the shortness of breath and wheezing. With bronchitis and asthma, though, it is much more difficult to tease out whether it's bronchitis or asthma. But most asthmatics know that they have asthma And if they have a viral infection, it's likely to trigger their asthma. So if you do not have a diagnosis of asthma, it's unlikely that you will have an upper respiratory tract infection that results in asthma. So that's probably more bronchitis. So is bronchitis uh, is the main symptom of that? Would that just be coughing or a tight chest? So bronchitis, um, the biggest symptom is cough, but it can be associated with some wheezing, with some shortness of breath. And, of course, if you've been coughing enough, you're going to feel that your chest is tightening up. And the cough can be productive or not productive, so you can get that discolored sputum, but not always. And then does bronchitis transition into pneumonia if you don't take take care, or is this two different bugs altogether? Um, it, it can. Um, in most cases, bronchitis will resolve within a couple of weeks, but in predisposed patients, you can end up with pneumonia. So we've all heard the term walking pneumonia. Tell our listeners what that means. So walking pneumonia is a pneumonia that um, is uh, brought on by a particular bug. And so the symptoms tend to be not as, not as severe. Uh, you, don't, you still have the cough, but you're able to go to work and function. Uh, is, are most of the cases of walking pneumonia, in other words, you're sick, but you can still walk around, are they viral or are they bacterial? They tend to they tend to be caused by a specific bacteria. Okay, so antibiotic treatment would be appropriate. Would be appropriate, correct? Based on a sputum culture. Um, oftentimes. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, as we finish up here, you've got ten seconds to convince everyone to stay home when they're sick. We didn't bring that up. Please do. Please stay home. Rest and that chicken noodle soup is really going to be the best treatment if you have that upper respiratory tract infection. All right, so how long are can you infect someone else before you get symptoms of the cold and how long after your symptoms are gone? Oh, good question. <laughs> I, at least a few days before, as long, once you start coughing and sneezing, then you are infective, and that can um, last for a couple days afterwards. So a good... 12 weeks to two or 12 days to two weeks all right stay away from those people right (laughs) (laughs) and wash your hands that's the best way to keep from getting sick is hand washing eat right and plenty of sleep and also good ideas all right our thanks to dr adela taylor from the mayo clinic health system in eau claire wisconsin thanks dr taylor thank you so much